Hi Pom Pom fam, welcome back to the Pom Pom Bros channel. Today's topic is going to be really interesting because we're going to be discussing something that's been very popular recently, which is home cooked meals for dogs and raw dog food. So we've been seeing videos about home cooked meals as well as raw prepped foods for a while now. And it's interesting because we had done both diets for our dogs so we can truly understand both perspectives. We'll be discussing our journey and information we found that helped shift our dog's diet to where it is today, which is rotational model feeding. So without further ado, let's just hop into the video. So when Christina and I first got our dogs, we had them on Hill Science Diet for one day and saw some very terrifying side effects of kibble instantly, such as not digesting the dry food well, throwing up, and they couldn't stand the smell of it. I started immediate research, which led me to quote unquote real food, and I had them on farmer stock for a couple months and they were doing okay with it. However, it was a hassle to portion for several dogs and became super pricey. I also had no control over each ingredient that went into my dog's bodies, so I decided to take it into my own hands and cook their meals at home. It was, to say the least, a lot of work. And, um, but we felt, however, that it was necessary and safer for the dogs. Safer meaning we had to kill the bacteria such as salmonella that were commonly feared in the raw dog food community. It was also something we were used to as we've never prepared raw meat before. We would mix cooked foods together such as meat, fruits, and vegetables, and we buy all sorts of ingredients at the market like green-lipped mussel, salmon, tuna, quail eggs, chicken feet and eggs, sardines, different proteins such as ground chicken, pork, beef, yak, venison, bison, coconut oil, flaxseed oil, chia seeds, carrots, broccoli, cauliflower, spinach, kale, liver, kidney, goat's milk, chicken neck, and so much more. We would rotate and mix all sorts of ingredients together to try and meet the balanced nutrients for dogs. Although it was time consuming, it was fun, and I believed that I was feeding my dogs the best of the best at that time. But as Dog Guardian, we continued our research, dig deeper, because our dogs were still having diarrhea, loose stools, um, their anal glands became impacted, and their coats weren't the best. They had tar buildup all over their teeth, and we just thought, what could be wrong? We soon discovered that usually raw meat typically consists of 65 to 70% of water, but the process of cooking it at high temperature denatures the structure of the meat molecularly and structurally. Cooking meat lowers the pH level, which in turn causes it to become more acidic and pushes out much of its water content. Cooking the meat breaks down any tough fibers and connective tissue, and it also reduces the antioxidant capacity that is beneficial for our dogs. During the heating process, the meat loses vitamin C, all B vitamins, iron, taurine. Once the meal is finally prepped, there are all sorts of ingredients mixed in together, thus further causing the digestive tract to work harder and protein, fruits, and vegetables all digest at different paces. It is actually common for putrefaction to occur, which is the process of decay or rotting in the body. This causes the body to flush fluids to the digestive tract to prevent further damage to the affected area and flush it out, resulting in diarrhea and vomit. Another point to home cooked meals is that it did not include bones because cooked bones will result in possible damage and punctures in the mouth, throat, and digestive system of the dog. Once the bone is cooked, its structure also changes causing it to become brittle and sharp. Raw bones, however, are softer, much safer, and very natural for wild dogs to consume. Without bones, there was no calcium for our developing dogs, so we had to get different vitamins and synthetic supplements to try and fill the gap. So as you can imagine, everything that is happening with home cooked meals, our dog's bodies were working hard to digest and eliminate and expel toxins. The kidneys and livers were overburdened and their bodies were using different channels such as the ears, skin, paws, and anal glands to push out waste. At the end of the day, we concluded that home cooked meals risk far outweighed its benefits. So after many different diet ventures including home cooked meals, barf and pmr we came across rotational model feeding also referred to as rmf which focuses on natural diet of wild dogs and their ancestor it also put emphasis on the dog's anatomy especially the digestive system the digestive system only has one chamber for digesting which means different types of foods should not be mixed together 
So to best avoid that, there are plant or fruit days, and then there are separate meat days. And often there is a fast day after meat day since meat takes much longer to digest. It's actually rather interesting that today, dogs eating raw meat is considered a trend. But wild dogs and their ancestors have always been eating this way. This is called a species appropriate diet where there's no human intervention, no humans altering their foods. Raw is a dog's true natural way of eating. A dog's body is designed to process animal tissue that has a higher bacterial load, quote unquote, and they have a short digestive system, high gastric pH, which is great for digesting meat. With further research, vets found out that salmonella is actually found in the digestive tract of healthy dogs. However, if the body is introduced with too much toxins, overgrowth of anything such as salmonella can result in sickness. So the best way we can prevent illness and disease is to stop feeding waste and toxins to our dogs. Experienced veterinarian Geoff Johnson stated that in school, he was taught raw chicken wings would kill dogs, but later realized that if a raw diet with bones, organs, muscle meat killed dogs, foxes, and wolves, then they would have gone extinct a long time ago. Veterinarian Richard Alpore said dogs in the wild will hunt, kill, and eat whole prey including the eyes, skin, fur, organs, and bones so the whole thing. They're also scavengers, so they will forage for fruits and berries and vegetable matter. A real healthy diet for a dog is something as close to what they eat in the wild as possible, which is raw meat, raw bones, fruits, and vegetable matter. Veterinarian Loria Leonard said bones help exercise the dog's muscle, jaw, and tongue. They're built to tear and wear through carcasses, bones, and knuckles. Lori claimed that all the raw fed dogs she ever saw never needed dental procedures because they all had beautiful teeth. Veterinarian Nick Thompson said critics of raw dog food keep on predicting an epidemic that dogs will get sick from bones and infections from salmonella, but it's just not happening in reality. So guys, although dogs were taken and domesticated for specific looks and personality traits, it doesn't change their anatomy, physiology, or nutritional needs. They still have the same genetic makeup as their wild ancestors. Nora Len said it best, staying closer to nature is conservative, and doing otherwise is taking a risk, not the other way around. And the result? All of my dog's fur are shinier and healthier than ever, they lost excess unnecessary fat, and they're currently detoxing all the waste that's within their body. My dog's ears infection is so much better, before there was gooey, black, crusty goose and chunks coming off his ears and he would constantly scratch and itch and tear his ear apart. And finally on this diet, it's finally starting to clear up. They have perfect anal gland health, and best of all, they're thriving and happy. These were my own experiences with home cooked foods and raw foods and I'm always open minded and willing to do what's best for my dogs and that's what we all can do. Even if you believe in a different model feeding, it doesn't mean you have to stick to it for life because you may miss out on how to improve your dog's health. So please do your research and use common sense to help your dogs live an optimal healthy life. If you found this information helpful, please comment, like, subscribe and share with all who would benefit from hearing this. If you guys are interested in what type of raw food to feed your puppy or small breed dogs, press subscribe and the bell notification button to get updated and lots more videos are coming. Thank you and much love to everyone. See you next Thursday.